I'm going to be tasting the 29 vintage of the Chateau de Prisac saint Emilion Grand Cru. This is from the right bank. So on the right bank, the two major appellations that are most well known are saint Emilion and Pomerol. Um, you might have heard of the left bank classification in 1855. Things worked a little bit differently on the right bank. Um, Pomerol has in fact never been classified, although you'll find chateaux there that command just as high prices as you'll find in the first growths of the left bank. saint Emilion was classified 100 years later than the 1855 classification of the left bank. So the first one was 1955. This has been a very controversial classification system. Um, the broader classification is just to call it saint Emilion. Then the next step up in quality is Grand Cru. And you have to be evaluated uh, every several years to stay at that classification level. And the wines are tasted, they have a stricter quality to be included in that classification. Um, and then in addition, there's an, there are two levels above that. So um, Centimeter Grand Cru Class A, A and B. Well, I should do it the other way, B and A, because A is at the very top tier. Now, because these wines are reclassified not infrequently, there have been a lot of questions about who's judging these wines, how they're being judged. And it's been so controversial that many of the very top chateaus have simply opted out altogether of the classification system. So a little bit of drama there. On the right bank, um, this is in fact a Grand Cru Class A. It was first uh, recognized as Grand Cru Class A in 2012. So there's a lot to talk about with this property. It dates back to uh, medieval times when it was a fortress. And in fact, this chateau um, where it sits now used to be a castle where official treaties and documents were signed to end the Hundred Years War. So ton of history. Aside from that, I really love what's in the glass here. So when we talk about the Bordeaux blend or the red grape varieties of the Bordeaux blend, we always talk about Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. In actuality, there's very little Malbec that is remained uh, planted in Bordeaux. And there's another variety called Carmenere, which is legally permitted, but rarely seen. In fact, you'd be way more likely to find Carmenere in South America, in Chile, than you would be in Bordeaux. But this, in fact, has Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, Merlot, Malbec, and just a splash of Carmenere. So quite an exciting and intriguing, intriguing blend here in the glass, but we should check it out. All right, vibrant ruby in the glass, no bricking at the rim. On the nose, there's a lot of dark fruit for me. There's kind of um, a perfumed like blackberry compote with some herbs in there. There's definitely some cedar box, almost like cigar graphite. I really actually love the nose of this. I'm kind of getting lost in it just a bit, but it's it's very classic and very appealing, though we should taste it. It's full-bodied. Um, full-bodied in weight. There are very elegant tannins to this wine. It has um, a lot of tannin. <laughs> Um, my mouth is really coated with those tannins, but they're quite integrated. Um, they don't make my mouth feel completely dry all of a sudden. They're sort of just there as this nice structural backbone to the wine. Again, a lot of that black fruit on, on the palate, black currant, black cherry, black plum, and very, very nice use of oak. There is a, a, um, a significant amount of new French oak on this, but it certainly doesn't in any way interfere with the beautiful pristine fruit that I'm experiencing in the bottle. And of course, there's a lovely freshness as well, which is always something that I look for in Bordeaux is this balance of very sort of structured, serious wines, but with a beautiful lift as well.